I started using trackballs many years ago, and I've always been looking for the perfect one. Well, actually, the perfect trackball was already released back in 1998, in the form of Microsoft's Trackball Explorer. But unfortunately, due to the age of these trackballs, the plastic in them is brittle and it breaks easily, just like mine did even though I bought it brand new just a year earlier. Despite creating an utterly perfect design, Microsoft decided that a great business decision would be to never ever make this again, despite its universal and timeless appeal. And oddly enough, it's only recently that other companies have started to try and make similar designs with typically average results, such as the ProArc EM03. These newer designs tend to have the wrong feeling in the hands and lots of friction on the ball and they're just generally cheap and not very good. And the Microsoft Trackball Explorer was just so special and so perfect in its design that it really has to take a truly passionate effort from passionate fans to create something that comes anywhere close to it. And that's where the team at Ploopy come in with their Ploopy Classic Trackball. The Classic is a near perfect clone that takes practically everything that made the Microsoft Trackball Explorer great, upgrades it with open source principles, modern tech and modern software, and delivers it all in a customizable DIY 3D printed package. Stick with me as I take you through what makes the Ploopy Classic so great and a step-by-step -step guide on how to build your own. Let's get to it. Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze. This here is the Ploopy Classic that I built from the ground up and I've been using for a couple of months. And I want to say right away that this trackball has utterly blown me away. In terms of just being a trackball, it pretty much is as perfect as it could be, with an ergonomic, thoughtful shape that fills the hand comfortably and a ball that has no resistance or stiction at all. And I want to start this video by saying a huge thanks to Phil and Colin Lamb, the creators of the Ploopy, for sending me this DIY Ploopy kit after seeing my previous Game Ball review. Ploopy is an indie company, as indie as it gets really, and they were hoping to get some new eyes on their Ploopy series with this review. So please do consider checking out their website and their products, and sticking around to watch this video in its entirety if you have time. Ploopy don't just do trackballs, they do mice and even DIY headphones too, and their products are really awesome. As always, they're not seeing this video before it goes live, and they've also had no input on the content of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Ploopy Classic itself, starting with the build quality and material. And being a 3D printed product, this comes with the expected layer lines. And I was really worried that the Classic might be kind of uncomfortable in the hand with this kind of texture, but actually the totally opposite is true. It is incredibly comfortable. In fact, it is supremely comfortable under the hand, with the textured lines actually adding a very pleasant, solid, and grippy feeling to the shell. And honestly, it's convinced me that 3D printing can be viable in a commercial product. One of the bonuses that comes with this material is that you can choose a variety of different colors to buy, or you could just print it yourself in any color or material that you might want. One thing I will say about this texture is that if it gets grimy or dirty, you will need to go in with a toothbrush, following the grain of the layer lines in order to clean it. I'm just saying this from experience, to be honest. The body of the mouth has these really elegant curves that are smooth and perfectly shaped to rest under the hand's natural open position. It is literally more comfortable to rest my hand on this trackball than it is to just rest it on the desk. And I have no need to grip this mouse at all. My hand just lays comfortably on top of it. Both the left and the right clicks and the scroll wheel are activated using your thumb. And that might sound kind of weird at first, but once you get used to it, you'll never want to go to any other kind of mouse again. And your thumb is generally better suited for moving around, clicking and scrolling than your index or middle fingers are. There's also two extra buttons on the right side of the mouse, which are programmed to back and forward in your web browser by default. The buttons themselves are nice and clicky, with a very classic and loud mouse click sound. And other than the finicky build process that we'll get to shortly, I've had no issues with them at all. They're positioned perfectly, easy to click, and the DIY nature of the Ploopy Classic means that you could even change out the switches with a little bit of effort and a soldering iron if you wanted to. Now the ball is by far the most important element of a trackball, and it's really important that it rolls freely and has little to no resistance under your fingers when you move it. That's what we call stiction in this industry. And also, it should be able to spin freely when you throw it. And I'm glad to say that all of these are true on the Ploopy Classic. The three metal bearings that sit underneath the ball are a uniquely DIY solution to getting a smooth movement, and it really pays off. In fact, this ball rolls more freely than any other I've had, 
and has no stiction or resistance whatsoever. I'm never fighting against the ball to get it moving, even with the very lightest of touches. And when thrown, it spins for a surprisingly long time. One thing you should know about these bearings is that they're actually pretty noisy, with a kind of scratchy sound. It took me a while to get used to it just because the sound made my mind think that there was some resistance on the ball, when in reality there's none at all, it's just the sound of the bearings rotating. In normal usage, you'll barely be able to hear it, but on the other hand, if you throw the ball really hard, you'll get this really sweet revving sound, which is very cool, especially for gearheads. And overall, the ball itself is basically perfect. It allows for fine grain cursor movements, as well as broad sweeping movements. Oh, and I should also mention that it's actually a snooker-sized ball, which means you can replace it with, well, a snooker ball or any ball of that size. Overall, it is absolutely a 10 out of 10 NBA bowler experience. The only part of the Ploopy Classic that isn't quite as good as I wanted is the scroll wheel. It has a freewheeling feeling, and it's very nice and smooth, and well positioned under the thumb. But when you scroll very quickly, it does have a tendency to skip inputs. Personally, I'm a click and scroll kind of guy, so it's not too big of an issue for me. It's not really a big problem that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, but when I do need to scroll quickly using the wheel, it can feel a little bit sluggish whenever it skips. I will also note that directly after assembly, the wheel was pretty stiff, but it just took a couple of regular days to get it broken in and rotating very well. One interesting quirk of the Ploopy is its USB-B connection, the same kind that you'll find on a printer, and the Ploopy team say that they use this connection due to its low cost and its robustness. Now personally, I never unplug my mouse, so I don't mind it at all, and I'm glad that they went with this over a micro USB connection or a fixed cable. I know, I know, a lot of people are expecting USB-C these days, but eh, most mice have fixed wires anyway, so at least I appreciate this one being removable. And they're actually right, the connection is incredibly sturdy. It never accidentally comes unplugged, and you can even lift the mouse by the cable and shake it without the slightest risk of it dropping off. So overall, I think this is a really intuitive and good decision to go with this juggernaut type connection. And there's one more great feature of the Ploopy I want to draw your attention to. It runs the popular QMK firmware, which is usually found on keyboards. And with QMK, you can customize every button to do anything you want, including working as keyboard keys, media keys, or whatever else. Setting up and modifying the key map is a little bit out of the scope for this video, but suffice to say the possibilities are basically endless. On my classic, I've set it up so that I trigger a second layer of buttons while I hold down the rightmost button, and then pressing either of the left, middle, or right buttons will change the speed of the mouse. When it comes to using the Ploopy trackball on your computer, in general use, it's kind of hard to describe it, because as an input device, this thing just disappears when you start to use it. It is so incredibly comfortable under your hand, the ball is so smooth and frictionless that you really won't even notice that you're using it. It's just totally natural. And personally, I think that that's the absolute best way that a mouse should be. It has all the features that you might need with the QMK firmware, but just plugging it in out of the box, or rather after you build it, it's just going to work perfectly and you're going to forget that you're even using an input device. It just feels like an extension of your hand. And it has plenty of sensitivity if you want to play games, or lower it down and take care of regular computer tasks. Unlike the Game Ball, which had a gaming theme and some outside-of-the-box features, the Ploopy Classic is just a much more reserved device. And again, I think that the best type of input device is one that melts away and you forget that you're using it. And the main takeaway to that point is that there's absolutely nothing that holds the Ploopy Classic back, nothing you'll notice that gets in the way or is uncomfortable. It's just a flawless user experience. Honestly, it's really hard to describe what makes a perfect trackball without talking about the old Microsoft Trackball Explorer. But the Ploopy Classic comes incredibly close to that in both design and the user experience. And I would say in many ways improves on that as well. Every curve and input, other than perhaps the wheel, has been crafted to perfection, and is all in all an incredibly creative, open source DIY 3D printed product. It's hard to believe that such an excellent end user quality product could come from a couple of guys with good ideas and a 3D printer. But the Ploopy Classic is absolute proof that such a thing is possible, and that it can be a vastly superior product to commercially available alternatives. I highly, highly recommend the Ploopy Classic for anybody looking for the ultimate in trackball comfort and usability, to anybody wanting home-baked indie products in their life, and those who want to support small business creativity. Also, if you're into 3D printing, hacking, or open source, you're going to love this device. The entire thing is open source, so you can download the STL files to print it yourself. 
You can grab the PCB files to get them printed by your preferred manufacturer. Everything about it is perfectly accessible, whether you're a regular user or some kind of hacker man. With all that said, please do consider checking out Ploopy.co and taking a look at their offerings. So now it's time to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to show you how intuitive and mostly easy it is to build your own Ploopy Classic. Know that to do this you'll need to do a little bit of soldering, but it's nothing difficult. You'll also need a number one or smaller Phillips screwdriver, and maybe some needle nose pliers and also maybe a hammer. Also, you don't have to build this yourself. If you want to, you can buy the Classic or any of Ploopy's products pre-built from their website. So go ahead and check out Ploopy.co if you're interested in that. Well, after ordering a kit, you'll be sent a box with a few different baggies containing all the parts. The most important step is to open up the Ploopy Classic wiki on GitHub and check that you have all of the correct parts. There should be a packing list in the box as well that you can cross-check the items with. Once you've confirmed that everything is present, I recommend that you read through the entire wiki once or twice so that you're somewhat familiar with the build process. The first step is going to be to connect the IC and sensor, but in my kit they were pre-attached. The wiki has instructions on how to add them on if you need to, but hopefully you won't. So our first step is to gather the two PCB parts, the PCB anchor and the jig, as seen here. You're going to attach the anchor to the larger PCB, ensuring that the straight edge aligns with the edge of the PCB. It should just pop into the holes like Lego. Next, grab the smaller PCB and attach that to the anchor as well. You'll notice that the copper solder pads on both PCBs will be really close together. Now slide the PCB assembly into the jig all the way. It is absolutely critical at this point that the alignment with the anchor and jig is correct and fit it all the way in. If this is wrong, you're going to have a lot of problems later on, so be sure to double check it. Also, you can take a look at the solder pads and make sure that those are aligned. Now heat up your soldering iron very hot. I used 420 degrees. And then simply solder each pair of large copper pads together. My job came out a little bit blobby with solder, but that's okay. I'd recommend making contact with both copper pads using your iron so that they're both adequately heated as you apply the solder. With that done and when it's cooled down, you can remove the PCB from the jig. It might be a little bit stiff to remove, but that's probably a good sign. Now it's time to prepare some of the 3D printed parts. There are grid-like support material attached that you'll want to just pull off. First from the top shell. Make sure that you get all the pieces in the slots and holes, as well as any of the little pieces that are still attached to the case. You might need to use a plier or a clips to get these out. Just be careful not to damage the shell. Next, pull the supports out from the mouse button part as well. These should just pull off cleanly and easily. Next, we'll remove the parts from the scroll wheel holder. But this part is very, very fragile, so be very careful and don't force it too much. You'll notice I actually snapped my first one, but thankfully there was a second one in the box that I was able to prepare successfully. Always err on the side of caution with these delicate parts. And now we'll assemble the scroll wheel. Simply click the cylindrical part into the holder like this, then snap it into the upper PCB. Again, it's kind of like Lego, but a bit more like Bionicle this time. Note that the cylinder should have the thicker part facing downwards. Now let's get to the base. This is the larger flat part. Lay the PCB assembly into the base until it lays flat. It doesn't need to clip in or anything right now, and it should fall into a pretty obvious place once you insert it. Now we'll add the right set of mouse buttons, but first take heed of a warning from the wiki. The screws that are shipped with this kit grip the plastic very firmly, which is good, but if the screws are driven too hard, they will cause the plastic to separate. So whenever you drive screws during this assembly, go slowly and go gently. When you feel any significant resistance, stop. Seriously, do not over tighten these screws or you will break the base. Grab the right buttons and lay them in the square in the base. Insert a screw and slowly and gently screw it down, whilst also rotating the buttons gently toward the PCB as you go. This will ensure that they're positioned correctly. I tend to err on the side of leaving the screw a little bit looser versus leaving it a little bit tighter. Next, we'll fit the scroll wheel dowel into its hole in the top shell. The goal here is to insert the metal dowel, then wiggle it around to loosen the hole. This will ensure a good fit when we assemble it later on and you can set the top shell aside once you've done that. And now it's time to build the scroll wheel itself. Grab the wheel, a silicon ring, and two metal dowels. Insert a dowel into each side and press them in firmly. You might need a hammer to hammer these in, or what I did is press these dowels down into a metal surface really hard until they pressed into place. And now a very important step is to measure both sides. The flat side dowel should stick out around 10.4 millimeters when it's all the way in, and the other side will stick out around 13.6 millimeters. If they are longer than that, you need to push them in further. Absolutely double and triple check this, because having it wrong will mess up your build later on. With all that set, just slip the silicon ring onto the wheel. Now just slot the wheel into the holder gently, 
ensuring that the flat side is upright. And now it's time to screw in the primary mouse buttons. Remember the warning about screws? Go slowly and don't screw these in too tightly. Now let's assemble the bearings, and the kit comes with a handy jig for this purpose. Insert a roller bearing into the circular slot, and a dowel into the top part. Then just press them together until the jig snaps shut. Watch your fingers so that you don't get pinched. And this is what the bearing will look like when it's complete. And you'll just need to repeat this for all three bearings. It can be a little stiff and you might need to press it closed really hard, but just stick with it, you'll get it eventually. And now we'll insert these bearings into the top shell. In the ball hole, you'll see three slots. You simply need to push the bearings in. I used the same screwdriver from earlier to just push the edges of the bearings into place firmly. The bearing itself should still spin freely. And with all that done, we're finally ready to assemble the Ploopy Classic once and for all. Grab the bottom part and the top shell. And there are some really useful steps from the wiki that describe how to do this. First, align the USB-B connector with the top part of the shell. Put your thumb on the primary buttons and your index and middle finger on the secondary buttons and depress the buttons gently, and you'll hear them click. Pull the top gently from the back until the peg from the scroll wheel enters the sheath on top. The shell might bend slightly, but that's okay, just don't force it. Press the top into the base with gentle but firm pressure until the two are seated together entirely. And this is where I started to have a lot, and I mean a lot of trouble with this build. Firstly, just getting the shells together, and then with the buttons getting stuck and not pressing properly. I spent absolutely ages trying to get this thing together with no success, until finally I retraced every single step, and I found that the scroll wheel's top dowel was a few millimeters too tall. I ended up pushing it in all the way, until it pushed in a little bit further and measured exactly 10.4 millimeters. And after that, the assembly went together with absolutely no problems at all. And that's why it's so important to measure the dowel lengths when you first put the wheel together. When you've got all that done and all is well, screw in the bottom four screws, and then check that all the buttons are clicking down correctly. You might find that the right buttons in particular either stick or don't push down properly. And if that's the case, you will need to unscrew the bottom screws, take the top cover off, and reposition the right mouse buttons. You'll probably need to adjust the screw a little bit to change the position. It's just something that you might need to tweak and tinker until it's just right. Again, I found that a slightly looser screw with a little bit of play in the buttons is what worked for me. With all that done, screw it back together again, add the friction pads to the bottom, and finally insert the ball. It should just ploop right into place. And with that, you've just built your very own Ploopy Classic trackball from the ground up. And I would say this is a really good build project. There's very little that can go seriously wrong and very few problems that you can't fix by just going back and double checking stuff. And I think that this would be a really enjoyable experience to maybe build with a child or a friend. And there are a couple more things you need to do with your Ploopy trackball at this point. Firstly, of course, plug it in, make sure all the buttons are working, the ball is working, and that the scroll wheel is working. However, do note that the scroll wheel might be a little bit sticky at first. Just give it a couple of days. If you find that the ball isn't tracking very well, just grab a little bit of toothpaste, yes, toothpaste, and rub it all over the ball. You can wipe off any excess with a paper towel. This will just roughen up the edges of the ball ever so slightly and allow the optical sensor to pick up its rotation. And finally, you want to break in the bearings. To do this, just throw the ball in all directions for a few minutes, and you should find that it then rotates perfectly smoothly. So there we have it, one of the best trackballs ever designed and ever made, built from the ground up right here in this video. I want to say a huge thanks again to Phil and Colin for getting this device into my hands for review. And not only that, but just for bringing this product to market. I think it's actually kind of a miracle that a product like this exists. And to me, it just feels like the very definition of a grassroots product. It's perfectly usable by anyone, it's commercially viable, and yet it has that DIY open source feeling. I just love everything about it. And above all of that, it is just a seriously excellent trackball. And I genuinely believe it has reached the same level of excellence as the Microsoft Trackball Explorer. And I do encourage you to check out Ploopy.co and see all of their products from mice to trackballs to headphones. And if you're in the lookout for a product like that, I do hope that you'll give Ploopy a try. If you like this video, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up, and also consider leaving a comment in the box below, letting me know what your favorite mouse, trackball, or input device is. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and of course, my normal retro gaming content. Thank you very much for watching Retro Breeze, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Top of my game, stuck up in the fast lane. Success on my neck is like Vegas on my chain. I'm an NBA baller. I ain't got the time to run up on these mini knees and put it on the line. Now they always asking me, what's your life like now?